Okay, hi everyone. This is, I think, um, another video about primitive roots. Okay. And we want to make sure, so we, we discussed some of the basic properties about primitive roots. Um, in this video, I want to show that uh, primitive roots exist modulo P. Not only that, um, maybe like uh, how many of them there are after. Okay, so proposition, I guess this is really like a theorem, but whatever. Okay, um, so let P be a prime. Okay, then there exists an integer A whose GCD is one with P and whose order is P minus one. The order of A mod P is, is P minus one. Okay. Proof. And um, the proof is, involves, we're gonna divide up all the, um, so there's P minus one things in UP. Let, 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 me, let me try and describe it with a picture anyways. Here's all of UP. Here's the things with order P minus one. In other words, here's the primitive roots. Okay. And like, here's the things with order two. And then, here's the thing with order um, D. Okay. So proof. So we're gonna count all these different the elements of order D in, in in a certain way, right? So let's 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 call like each the number of elements in each segment A of D. So it's the number of elements in UP whose order has, whose order is D. Okay, and first of all, every element of UP has some order, so certainly, and the order of every element divides P minus one, so we have the sum D dividing P minus one of A of D is just the number of elements of UP which is just P minus one. And not only that, not only that, but if we look at the sum of D dividing M of A of D, we will in fact get m as long as or m dividing p minus one okay this is our claim okay now let's suppose that we have this claim then we have a trick to get what is a of p minus one okay f for a second let's just pretend we've proved this claim suppose our claim holds then we'll just show that we're, we, we can finish uh, our proof. Okay. Then if we look at the sum of D dividing M mu of D, let's say mu of M over D times D, This will be A of M. 
but this is also phi of m. Okay, and both of the this this part of the equation, this is from Mobius inversion. And in particular, a of p minus 1 is phi of p minus 1. So the number of elements with order p minus 1 is phi of p minus 1. Okay, so if we can prove this claim, in other words, we can write m as the sum of a of d. Well, if we can write m as the sum of a of d as d divides m, then we can write a of m as the sum of, in, in terms of m and mu. Okay, we can write a of m like this. Basically, if m can be written in terms of a, of a's, then a can be written in terms of m's and 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 mu as well. Okay. Okay. So now let's just try and prove the claim. If the claim holds, then we're done. So um, let's. What's the sum of d divides m of a of m? Well, this is just the size of, so a of m, sorry, a of d. a of d is the elements of order d. And if we sum over all d dividing m, it's all the elements whose order divides m. So it's all the a's in u, n, whose order whose order divides m. And in fact, this is just the elements of a such that a to the m equals one. I guess I should put it like that. Okay. Okay, so now we want to show, so definitely um, we want to show that the number, that every, anything whose order divides m is a solution of a to the m might equals 1. And of course, if a to the m equals 1, then the order of a divides m. Okay, so if a to the m equals 1, the order divides m. But if the order divides m, then a to the m also equals 1. So these these two sets are the same, so their size is the same. Okay. Okay. And in fact, um, so this this set this has at most m elements. Why is that? Because if I let f of x be the polynomial x to the m minus 1, this polynomial, this is a, a polynomial with coefficients in z mod nz, the integers mod n, this has degree m. So it has at most m roots every a that has order dividing m is a root of this polynomial f. Okay, so this polynomial has degree m and it has most m roots. Okay, so definitely each of these sets has a size at most m. So each of these sets has size at most m. Okay, what does that tell us? Um, oh, like, 
Okay, um... So we want to know that it has exactly m elements, but now we just do one final thing. If I look at the polynomial x to the p minus one, this has exactly p minus one roots, and oh, I, this whole time I was saying mod n mod n, but we're looking at mod p. Sorry about that. Mod P, mod P, not mod N. Sorry about that. Okay. So X to the P minus one minus one has exactly P minus one roots in Z mod PZ. Okay. But also we can factorize X to the P minus one minus one. That's just um, x to the m minus 1 times, um, so you have to be careful, like I have to be careful, I don't get this wrong, but we write p minus 1 equals m times, let's say, k, and then um, we, we factor this, so, so, you, so you let um, y equals x to the m, I have to be careful and do this on the side. Y is going to be x to the m, and x to the p minus 1 is really y to the k. So y to the k minus 1 is y minus 1 times y to the k minus 1 plus y to the k minus 2, and so on, plus y plus 1. And now we substitute back. Y is really x to the m. So this is x to the m minus 1 times x to the m to the k minus 1 and so on. Okay, so this is what we get. Right. Okay, this has exactly p minus 1 roots. This has, so, so let's like tally the number of roots. exactly p minus 1 here less than or equal to m here and the degree is of this polynomial is m times k minus 1 there's, so there's less than or equal to m times k minus 1 here okay and in total there's less than or equal to m plus m times k minus 1 so on the right hand side we have at most m times k minus 1 plus m in other words, that's just m times k. m times k is p minus 1. Okay. But on the left-hand side, we have exactly p minus 1. So that means on the right-hand side, these less than or equal to's have to both be equals. If either one of them is less, then we have a strict, strict less than p minus 1 on the right-hand side, okay, which is a problem. So both of these are equal. In particular, x to the m minus 1 has exactly m roots. Okay, so... Okay, and the number of solutions in up such that a to the m equals one is just m. Okay, now if we go back up, that means the sum of a of d as d divides m is m, and by Mobius inversion, that means that the sum of mu of m over d times d is a of m, and that's also the 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 formula for phi of m. Okay, and so the the number of elements of order m is just phi of m, and particularly the number of elements of order p minus one is phi of p minus one. Okay, and let's stop there. Um, so, anyways, thank you for watching, um, yep, yeah, I'll see you next time.